And um, as we were stepping again a bit closer, uh, we are even more closer now because we just arrived to Tartu, uh, so to University of Tartu. And actually, Gaidi Tulver uh, from the University of Tartu is going to talk about the role of metacognition. Uh, so, Gaidi, uh, you are uh, free to join the stage as well here. Hello, everyone from, from my side as well. Uh, and thank you to the previous speakers and Olak already nicely introduced uh, slightly the concept of metacognition, which I will be talking about more from the perspective of cognitive science uh, as a researcher at the University of Tartu. And um, I will also mainly focus on a few challenges that I have uh, identified in the topic of education and AI uh, development specifically as it relates to metacognitive skills. Uh, but first, to uh, define the terms, I will be the first to admit that metacognition is a very broad term. Uh, there's a lot of dis disagreement about what we should consider when we uh, talk about it. Um, however, uh, most broadly speaking, it can be defined as thinking about thinking, or more specifically, having the ability to be aware of or control your mental processes, such as attention, emotion or memory. And in uh, cognitive science, we like to uh, distinguish uh, metacognition into these two broad categories. So we can talk about awareness or monitoring of your mental states. So when you're listening to a presentation, you have the ability to be aware of your thought process, where your focus is, and uh, notice when your focus is slipping, for instance. And then on the other hand, we have this uh, component of control or regulation. Uh, so not only are we able to notice our focus sleeping, we do have the ability to direct or steer it back towards the presentation at uh, will. Um, and to highlight another example for of how many metacognitive skills we use on a day-to-day -day basis if we think about problem solving. That might involve uh, metacognitive skills such as defining the problem clearly, decomposing the task into uh, a series of actions, um, evaluating or monitoring the progress or adjusting strategies where necessary and then eventually evaluating uh, the outcome as well. And uh, when we talk about this step, it's especially pertinent to mention that we need to have the appropriate level of confidence to be able to uh, estimate the best outcome and choose the best solution. And why is it relevant that we talk about metacognition uh, today or in general? So not only is it something that we use all the time automatically uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, but also uh, we know from different studies that having better metacognitive abilities is linked to a lot of benefits that we would like to have the, uh, in advance of personal and career-related success, such as improved uh, time management skills, uh, improved focus, being better at problem-solving or decision making tasks and also general well-being and mental health. And uh, we also know that people are different at these skill levels and some of this is a natural progression that uh, metacognitive abilities develop with age and expertise but also we do know that there are skills uh, that can be uh, trained for instance in an educational context by in uh, including different metacognitive techniques uh, uh, in classes. And uh, for today's talk, I will specifically highlight these novel uh, challenges that we're facing where metacognition uh, can be seen as a key factor, such as dealing with uh, new learning environments or remote learning challenges, and also more critically, the use of AI tools. So firstly, as a brief example from the context of remote learning, I wanted to highlight this one uh, survey, online st survey, which was conducted towards the end of the uh, lockdown uh, of uh, COVID. And it was conducted among Estonian students and teachers uh, to um, inquire and evaluate uh, their coping during this uh, remote learning stage. And uh, they were able to extract these four unique profiles of students from among almost 700 uh, responders. Um, and uh, to summarize the findings, basically we could see that uh, two thirds of the children were able to uh, cope quite well with the remote learning, some of them even being uh, uh, thriving in this scenario, so being very independent learners, uh, but most of them being quite competent at it. And then we have this one third of students who are really struggling during this time and the core key factor seemed to be that they were not as skilled at, at self-regulating, planning their time. They needed much more external support. Um, and sometimes this would also result in uh, stress, frustration and um, health issues. So this is something to consider. 
Um, and while this is uh, perhaps a specific uh, example, and we can hope that we won't be uh, needing the challenge of that extent of remote learning in the near future, uh, I think it does speak more generally as well to this uh, fact that if we want to develop autonomous uh, learners, independent thinkers, uh, then uh, metacognitive skills and how to support those in an educational uh, setting is uh, critical. And the second challenge to highlight is um, the widespread use of different types of AI tools and both in an educational as well as more general uh, setting. Uh, and the first thing to consider here is that um, when we think about AI as it stands currently, and I'm mainly relying on the example of generative AI and LLMs, tools such as ChatGPT, that the metacognitive skills in AI itself are quite limited. And it's an active challenge and it's uh, being uh, researched and developed and will likely improve in the near future. But currently, um, the AI is not as aware of its own limitations and cannot critically uh, reflect on its own skills. So this means that it puts an incredibly high metacognitive demand on the user itself. Uh, so when we think back to a problem solving um, uh, example and all the tasks involved, including uh, defining the goal, um, uh, task decomposition, monitoring progress and switching strategies, and uh, very importantly, being able to evaluate the quality of the output, this now all relies on the user. Uh, but not only that, it adds uh, new challenges as well, which are only related to AI use. So, for instance, not only do we have to know um, how to achieve a task, but we have to know how to convey that in an efficient way in terms of prompt engineering and being able to get the best result. So this might involve being aware of tasks that are otherwise humans do automatically, such as being aware of the tone. When you're asking for the AI tool to write an email for you, you have to specify that this is the tone that I would like it to include. But also, of course, evaluating the reliability of the output, which means that you have to also have an appropriate level of confidence in your own skill in the do domain to be able to assess if the uh, output was uh, of high quality. And finally, also deciding whether or to what extent to include this AI automation in your workflow. Does it support my output? Um, does it do a better job? And is it supporting my learning or is it uh, simply uh, replacing it? Uh, so, um, yeah, there are several things to consider. And another example I wanted to highlight um, as it relates to how metacognitive skills are critical for how effective the AI tools will be is an example from a study where they compared novice and profession programmers as they were using Copilot uh, for a programming task. And uh, while Copilot did manage to increase the performance uh, of the programmers somewhat, but it also amplified metacognitive problems. Um, and very importantly, uh, it specifically did that for the novices. So again, when we think back to the education example, there might be one third of students who, uh, who might struggle with having enough metacognitive skills uh, to use AI efficiently. Um, so in the study, they found that uh, for uh, Proficient programmers, for example, where, where they were able to use um, the co-pilot to complete their task faster or explore alternative approaches, they were also able to identify and ignore when the comments were unhelpful. Whereas novices um, often reported this disrupted focus because co-pilot was in interrupting their workflow, but also they were more likely to accept the suggestions without being able to tell a helpful from an unhelpful so solution. Um, although it did increase the performance on average, uh, we can also see that it came at a cost for the novices. Uh, they made more mistakes and they produced less secure code, um, also while at the same time feeling this false sense of confidence and having an uh, illusion of having learned something. Um, and uh, these uh, authors also highlighted that this actually widens the gap when we think about the outcome uh, quality as it relates to proficient and, uh, and novice uh, users. So finally, just to highlight the main takeaway from this talk, um, if we think about these two very general, I think very attainable near future goals that we do want to foster more autonomous learners who are able to um, self-regulate, um, uh, critically evaluate sources, um, then we need to consider metacognitive skills and how to better foster them in an educational environment. 
But at the same time, we want uh, to make most of the opportunities and potential of AI tools. Uh, but we have to maintain uh, some considerations about um, safety, make sure that it is actually benefiting and supporting human learning and uh, not hindering it. And we can think of it from these two aspects, from having to um, improve uh, metacognitive training uh, in the context of early education already, but even beyond education to help support metacognitive skills in humans. And there's a lot to consider from the perspective of uh, how to develop better AI tools. So firstly, developing metacognitive skills in AI to be able to reduce the load they place on currently uh, on the user, uh, but also to um, the opportunity to integrate different metacognitive support strategies already into the tools, which, which can be very helpful also for the educational goal. And in the background, uh, we mustn't forget about the role of cognitive science. So this is the area that I'm representing uh, to still uh, work on improving to better understand metacognition. There is, it is lacking uh, in some areas for, for that as well. So we need to better understand it. And then uh, we can inform these decisions uh, for both, uh, from the education and AI development side. Thank you. That's all for me. I just wanted to put an illustration here of one example of how to potentially integrate metacognitive support into ChatGPT as this hypothetical example. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Gadi, uh, to you as well. Uh, once again, I think you have heard that sentence for a thousand of times from me uh, already. Uh, but again, time for the questions. And, uh, and, and maybe I would just take one of them that we already received, meanwhile, that you were talking over here as well. So in what ways can educators and developers support users in managing these metacognitive demands? Mm -hmm. I think I already slightly covered it in my uh, last slide, but... Uh, an active goal definitely for AI development in general is to uh, increase its metacognitive skills. So uh, for ChatGPT to also be able to give some sort of uh, output regarding how certain it is, how much confidence should be placed on the output. So that would already reduce some of the needs currently placed on the user who may not have the domain skill or expertise needed to make that decision. Mm. And also then yeah, integrating different strategies already into edu education, but also AI tools to help support and train these uh, skills in people. All right. Um, so far, we haven't received more of the questions. So I would like to say a big thank you, you once again.